Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to be doing a new Starting Steps video for the Papal States, which was the Wealth Vote, aka Patreon winner, uh, except it's not really going to be Papal States. We're going to be playing Rome, and we are going to be converting to Rome as quickly as possible. That's because the Papal States tag is actually the Rome tag. Uh, it's the exact same tag, and all it requires is that we change our laws from theocracy to monarchy to be Rome, or to either one of the republics to be the Roman Republic. However, we've been having some difficulty, you know, with the construction queue because currently it's bugged. So we're gonna be doing something a little bit different this round. We're gonna be doing something a little different. We are actually gonna be fiddling with some of the settings before the game starts, and we are gonna be disabling the autonomous investment pool. We are playing as the Papal States, and God will construct or use our pool this game. And now we are in and there is no private construction queue. I'm pretty sure this is the opposite of letting Jesus take the wheel. And so what we are going to need to do is we are going to need to get off of, uh, you know, theocracy and onto monarchy as quickly as possible. But before we do that, we're going to kind of review some of the unique features of the Papal States. We've done a Papal States run before, so we don't want to belabor it too much. Uh, but there is some cool stuff. So one, the civic nobility uh, has the baronial trait, uh, which the main thing is they are actually going to endorse theocracy over monarchy which is going to make our job even harder because they will not like swapping off of uh, theocracy which this is a bit of an interesting one and does make it hard to swap off um, you know these but what we are going to do what we are going to do is we are going to use the church to destroy the church uh, what we have here is we have uh, you know this guy who always starts out as a moderate and we are going to want to exile him. And for those of you who don't know, when you exile a moderate, they start out spineless. But when you exile them, they can actually roll any ideology. That is, any singular ideology can be rolled on these guys. And we considered rolling a positivist because this would be the funniest. Because the positivist is, of course, the most anti-clerical. But it's a bit more straightforward. The problem is the positivist also really hates uh, monarchy in addition to hating theocracy. And so we actually would not be able to use the positivist to swap off of theocracy and onto monarchy instead we'd have to do some weird strange going for presidential republic and then for uh, monarchy afterwards and so instead what we're going to do is we are going to put this guy outside of the government uh, we're going to reform the government we'll put in the civic nobility and we will take out the devout and we will exile this boy oh he is spineless he has no spine he believes in nothing uh, but we will just click exile dissident and he will go from being a moderate to being an extremist just kidding a traditionalist and what we are going to do is we are going to keep doing this until we find someone who is a royalist because then we will be able to use the church to destroy the church Okay, so we've done it about a dozen times, restarting each time, exiling the moderate, and it turns out that gentleman does have a spine. He's determined to be a traditionalist, and the reason why is apparently we cannot roll a royalist because normally you can override what uh, interest group you have to uh, apply to, but you do have to fulfill the other requirements, and I think the game has considered us as having stamped out monarchism, uh, in which case we will not be able to roll an, a royalist. We are only rolling a traditionalist, so we're going to try and figure something else out. Okay, if we control F for theocracy and look with what they support, taking a look at strongly disapprove versus strongly approve, we will find, unfortunately, almost everyone feels exactly the same about monarchy and theocracy. There is but one exception. There is but one exception, and that exception is the nihilist, which will... Uh, uh, proof of uh, monarchy just a little bit more than theocracy and so we can use a nihilist in order to get off of theocracy and onto monarchy directly. So we're gonna do something I thought I'd never have to do and I still I can't believe I'm doing it. We are going to research realism first. That is realism. We are going to go ahead of time, skipping all over this stuff, because you need the realism tech in order to roll a nihilist, which this is just this is something. Okay, so while we're busy getting real with the realism tech, we will be talking a little bit about how we want to spend our diplomacy. We want to foster good relations with several people, namely Austria, who is very likely to side against us while we're picking up these Italian miners. We're going to start off by going to war with Tuscany. In the event that Austria sides against us with Tuscany, we will just be restarting the whole run because this is our opening move. Tuscany is very important because they have some iron. We will improve relations with Austria to make this less likely, but they're definitely psychopathic. We will be looking to diplomatically integrate both the two Sicilies and Sardinia Piedmont, and then the rest of these guys we will be looking to get militarily, which leaves us with not too much diplomatic points, but we can gain a little bit extra uh, by rivaling some of these guys. We're going to start with rivaling Tuscany, and we 
we are also just going to rival all these little guys, which is going to make them uh, a little bit more belligerent towards us, but that's fine. It will give us a little bit more to work with, and then we are going to improve relations with both the UK and Spain, who are always good to have as allies, and then the rest, uh, we will just float for a little bit of infamy decay. For our authority, we actually only start out with three states, so we are going to be leaning pretty heavily into decrees for the very start. We are going to be using enlistment efforts to make the Tuscany War just a little bit easier, make it very, very certain. We are going to be promoting social mobility in Lazio because it has way more pops. We will be doing greener grass here in Umbria and as well as road maintenance. This is going to be our primary spot where we're going to build because it does have iron. Uh, just to kind of iterate or refocus, we are going after Tuscany first because Tuscany also has a lot of iron and so this will smooth out our overall development and this is going to be uh you know the strategy here early on we are collecting a consumption tax on services overall the consumption taxes aren't worth too much right now but as we get just a little bit bigger we're going to pull off of the edicts and move more in a uh, kind of the direction of doing a bunch of uh what is it uh consumption taxes now something we didn't mention that's also very unique about uh you know the papal states is you get access to vatican city which is going to give you plus 100 authority and plus 100 influence and this is only active if you are catholic or i think the christians might also gain access to it that's the orthodox or you know protestants uh, but they are the only ones who can turn this on and that plus 100 authority going to be really nice combined with the fact that since we are going to actually be playing Rome uh, and be staying on monarchy and probably you know either oligarchy or autocracy we'll talk about oligarchy in a second uh, we will be uh, you know we will be leaning in the direction of uh, having a ton of authority and so um, this is going to be a little bit more interesting in so far as this run go now in terms of how this run is going this is not going to be a pure min max run this is going to be a semi RP run uh, where we have the goal of kind of going after uh, Mara Nostrum borders or old school borders of Rome restoring it to its you know proper glory and to that end um, we are probably going to impose the self constraint that all the interests we declare at least initially have to be um, areas that were owned or controlled by Rome before we can declare any outside interests this means we will be heavily constrained in our ability to go for South Africa which is definitely meta or you know Indonesia which Rome never discovered and we will also be trying to pass laws in the direction um, of uh, you know kind of what looks like Rome or what we think looks like Rome now um, to that end uh, you know we're floating the extra authority for the enactment time this is the reason to do it this is strong in the early game and we are going to actually be forcing the corn laws first and I know what you might be thinking generalist I thought you just said you were doing RP this is meta why are you doing corn laws first well League of Millers aside which was you know true Roman grain for true Romans which we'll get into you know down the road here we need to talk about mm, we need to talk about Marcus Licinius Crassus, uh, who was kind of the first capitalist, uh, in a sense. Uh, he was a member of the first triumvirate uh, with uh, both Pompey and Julius Caesar, who doesn't need as much an introduction as Crassus does. So, story time here, but on him just being a capitalist, we see, we can check the Wikipedia, Crassus amassed enormous amounts of wealth th through speculation. He was kind of one of the OG capitalists, and he was the richest man in Rome uh, at the time uh, while, while he was alive. Uh, which we'll get to its death in a second. Uh, but there's an anecdote I really like about Crassus, um, which is that he actually founded the first fire department. And what he did, or what the fire department would do, is they would, you know, take all their water and they would go to houses that were burning down. And as they arrived there, uh, they would give the people who owned the houses an offer. Sell us your house uh, and we'll put out the fire. Uh, and they would buy the house for pennies on the dollar and then put out the fire and then rent the house back to the people who they just bought it from, who were the previous owners. And so they would basically get all of the excess value from that exchange and the person they could either do that or they could let their house be burned down and get nothing and so they would uh, sell their house for pennies and then Crassus would get a whole free house and that was kind of the story of the first fire department now how Crassus eventually died is he was uh, he was a little bit greedy in more than one regard he wanted the same glory that Caesar and Pompey military boyos had and what he did is he invaded the Parthian Empire and my geography at least in antiquity is not that great I think 
think Parthion's either, you know, Persia or up here a, bit, a little bit more. But he was eventually captured, and they executed him. And the way that they executed him was his thirst for wealth is so great, and they poured molten gold down his throat, and that's how Crassus died. But back to the point, um, I think it is well and fine that if we have people like Crassus that are cho uh, our choice of, you know, economic system will in fact be laissez-faire. That way we can, you know, uh, buy people's houses while they're burning down and then put out the fire and then sell them back to them. And by sell, I mean rent. Uh, now, to get Corn Laws triggered, you just have to get it above 25% price, uh, which is easy to do on anyone who's not very big by just doing a ton of trade routes exporting. And then you need to have uh, the, uh, you know, landowners in power, and then you will trigger the Corn Laws here. We're going to delete all these, uh, you know, excess trade routes, and then we are going to wait for the modern conservative event, in which case we will choose a hero for our age, we will get a landowner agitator, and then we will promote him up to government. Uh, that way we can utilize him to pass laissez-faire immediately now for our trade we can do the og thing you used to do uh before the private queue was even introduced and playing around this is a bit interesting we are going to prioritize imports on everything that is agrarian and we're going to build none of it uh because we care about capitalist ownership a lot and we are going to aggressively import every single agrarian good we are not going to do that on corn or actually we're going to do it on corn laws now that we have our corn laws boyo uh we will set it to import prioritization and we will import from other people we will prioritize the Austrian market, uh, you know, a little bit of that way we can uh, try and get good relations with them. And then we will be, you know, importing uh, all this type of goodies as well. That way we will not have to build any of it ourselves because we don't like the ownership class of, uh, you know, the agrarian buildings. We have to be a little bit careful and we're going to have to very proactively put in a whole bunch of auto expands on stuff that way we don't get too overwhelmed in the queue and our main heuristic is going to be we're going to put wood on auto expand um, just as soon as we finish this tooling workshop we're going to switch them all to sawmills which will change their ownership from being you know merchant guild owned which is uh you know more with the petite bourgeoisie to sawmills which is more you know in the lines of uh crassus Law change number two, we are going for professional army. Now, notably, we could have done this first because our landowner was a jingoist before, but oh well, uh, we will be going professional army. And then we will turn our eyes towards Greece, um, you know, to avenge, what is his name, Pyrrhus, invading Rome long, long ago, except he wasn't really from Greece. He was from, like, this region here, but we, we'll, we'll pretend he's from Greece. Um, and we will go after Greece as soon as we uh, reach above them in power rank. One little problem is we do not have a high enough power rank to really go after too many guys. We put our interest in North Africa with the hopes that, you know, some of these unrecognized tiny guys uh, we will be able to go after at least initially or perhaps even conquer Constantine. This is a pretty good state. It does qualify as, you know, a part of Roman holdings, except if we take it, France will really big hate us. Uh, but, you know... Uh, you know, we're not gonna call this France anymore, we're gonna call it Gaul, and we don't respect those people. So, we went back to back after Constantine and Mascara, um, kind of expecting it to be a little bit of a difficult thing to land on them. We did cheese the system by recruiting one frigate in each place, and so even though these frigates aren't fully recruited up, or anywhere close, you know, 42 manning this one, 23, 27, 190, it does count as a full unit for the purposes of landing, uh, but we, they just back down and so uh, we have actually uh, prevented France from getting any sort of extra ingress here and we will look to maybe in the future trade with I mean trade with Gaul um, uh, in order to gain these treaty ports back. Um, I think that they still will want it f because of, uh, you know, their journal entry, but we have cordial relations and we're improving relations, and so there's nothing they can do uh, to take these states. They could take uh, Atabas, uh, but na 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 as long as we have positive relations, uh, they can't declare on us. They can only join plays against us in exchange for these types of things, um, which, to be fair, is going to be annoying throughout the game, and this is probably a horrible mistake. And I think that taking these is probably overrated. However, there are as now the proud Roman territory for some proud Romans. Let's get that. Uh, oh, it doesn't say Roman. It still says Papal. That's a bit of a problem. So very, very interesting about us having full control of the queue is we can absolutely collapse prices and we can raise prices of stuff very, very strongly because the private queue is not there to pick up the bill and like be like, hey, look. 
this is getting too cheap, this is getting too expensive. So this means we actually need to actively watch trade quite a lot. But it also means we get to do stuff like really, really dirty specialize and stuff. Like we are going to start specializing in softwood because the PMs on that are insane. And so what we're going to do, we've been building a little bit of that. This is going to be all we build until I think we just build all of it. And we are just going to look to export it, namely to Austria and France, uh, because we are expecting to get our pie thumped by these two. And if we can get established trade agreements with these guys, uh, you know, very early Early on this will help a lot for our pie not getting too thumbed we are in kind of chill mode we're trying to pass professional army long live the Republic I mean the Empire and uh, you know we have a bit of infamy stored up so we're gonna be in little pseudo chill mode here um, you know after a kind of a, a good opening salvo uh, one of the reasons and uh, I, I feel silly for not having checked this before the reasons that we can't go after these states is because they're all in the Austrian market and Austria will not tolerate that well we hate that when that happens um, when the bill doesn't go through but Austria will not tolerate us going for these guys unless they're in some kind of existential war with Prussia and so we cannot go after these Italian miners we cannot touch these Italian miners until um, Austria is you know uh, over messing about with Prussia in which case we can kind of do whatever we want and so uh, we are just going to wait and hopefully we are going to hope that we can get our prestige up because we do want to subjugate Greece Greece has really really good companies and they are kind of in the sphere of influence that we want to be you know concerned with and this is this is kind of just the next target unless we think about going after Morocco which is another possible target um, for us to expand we'll have to go after something so it might just be taking states off of Greece which feels a little dirty but you know Attica is going to be the state where all the good companies are from yep this is going to be the realist waiting on realism while we watch uh, you know the good text passes by uh, we of course would want to get atmospheric engine kind of as quickly as possible this is not going to be possible because it's not very quick uh, but we are getting a lot lead a lot not spreading to us and so it's going to be a moment of truth when this finishes whether we high roll atmospheric engine or or mechanical tools or whether we low roll something else especially especially intensive agriculture because we will not be actively building any grain except for the grain of millers uh true grain for two true romans and we unfortunately this stock exchange thing is just rotting over here this is just terrible this feels so bad uh we, at least we're getting empiricism I guess, um, in terms of our nat spread there. Now, we don't really have too many places to go here because we can't do the Mara Shuffle because we can't declare an interest in Arabia, or at least it would be a cheeky interest because, you know, technically the Roman Empire did, uh, you know, occupy Syria here, but declaring this interest for the purposes of going into Mara rather than Syria, we're going to count that as a no-go. Uh, but fortunately, what's going on in Greece is uh, they're not very prestigious. Someone's defaulted on their loans, uh, and instead we have uh, them going to the point where it's looking like they're going to decay to an insignificant power, at which point we will be able to subjugate them. So this is looking up for us in the expansion department here. As far as laws go, we're going for racial segregation here. This seems fine enough. The Romans were very inclusive as long as you fought in their army um i think to be fair i'm not the the roman history expert except on crassus we know a lot about crassus um but we will be passing that we're still waiting of course ever more on realism though the USA this run is off to an absolute banger start, becoming a banana republic, uh, the fastest I've ever seen the USA become a banana republic. But do you see it? Government type, banana republic, there we have it, right there. So we've had a thought, uh, you know, stacking as much uh, reduction in terms of uh, enactment time uh, as possible allows you to enact the laws really fast, but I think we're about ready to spend a little bit more of our authority, and we've had a thought. Rome should be the greatest city in all the world, so let's do a greener grass there, as well as and encourage uh you know manufacturing there now this is not very optimal to place it here but it will allow us to you know build more here um and have those buildings be better than they otherwise would we have another 265 here and i think what we're going to do is we are going to take those in on uh some consumption taxes so we can build a little bit more we'll go for the luxury clothes uh combined with the liquor i think that'll be pretty good liquor is normally actually liquor is uh, liquor is a stern brew we kind of don't like it because it does tax the upper rung pop or sorry the lower rung pops more and so we'll go with this instead. So we're up on high taxes. We're, of course, going to become Rome, the mightiest army. So why don't we just, do, you know, raise military wages for that reason and that reason alone. Uh, and then 
continue on our way as these start to recruit up to 1k we will look to add a few more ships so like as both of the ones from tuscany uh for example uh recruit up to 1k which i think might be the case oh no we have two in lazio up at 1k uh we will continue to add more where they are um you know or we're already doing that we will add more where it appears that um they've already reached full recruitment uh, that way we can kind of open up our options because we are going to need to um, get little bits and pieces in other places in order to get this off and Portugal is going to be a target pretty early because they don't have a very strong military they tend to be a pretty small power they grow a lot in terms of population because the colonization type stuff um, but if we subjugate them early uh, that'll help out a lot and that is within you know Iberia the Iberian sphere of influence here for Rome and so you know lacking the ability to do Mara into Oman into Persia, which is Meta, or just go for South Africa uh, or Brunei uh, or Borneo in its entirety. Uh, this leaves a little bit of complications for us uh, finding places to expand, but I do think Greece, I think Greece is almost, um, I think it's almost Meta because their company is really good, so it is going to be really nice once they finally decay down. Oh no, wait, they gain some prestige. Terrible. I mean, we don't usually see Russia go for Qing this early either, so this is a little bit of a strange one for the AI here. It looks like they can't decay them below zero. Let's see what the war goals are. Woo, that's a lot of war goals. Uh, it looks like Tomsk, Tuva, Druzinga. Oh, this isn't too bad. These are all kind of like these northern areas, but this is a, a fat bite that Russia's trying to take out of Qing right now. Lathe just finished, and we swapped over all the PMs, but this is the moment of truth for us. What will Nat spread after Lathe? This is truly going to greatly affect it. And we get Bessemer process not spreading, which is not very ideal. Uh, we do get uh, stock exchange not spreading though, which is, of the three remaining to you know spread, this is going to be one of the better ones. And as these finish, um, so probably about when this just finishes passively, we will get the realist of text. That is of course realism. So the relation improving and running a kind of more routes than is optimal uh, from an income perspective to Sardinia Piedmont has rewarded us with a trade agreement. As we get bigger, um, we can pull them into our customs union. If they're on our customs union and have good enough relations, we will get an Italian event that will pop that will allow us to annex them. And so this is how we're going to try and annex two Sicilies and Sardinia Piedmont. Um, you know, we do see kind of the normal stuff kick off between the Ottomans and Israel, or not Israel, but speaking of Israel, um, looks like France is going to be going for Palestine here, um, which is a little bit of an aggressive uh, beat down on terms of what's going on with Egypt and Russia is managing to occupy every little bit of Qing except for the capital uh, I still think they can't enforce below zero but they're they're really close I think they uh, also need to occupy this uh, yeah so this is one of the war goals so they've basically just skipped over this singular war goal and have occupied everything that is not the capital or all of the war goals um, you know to have things uh, It'd be as bad as possible for them. It looks like uh, every, other than that things are looking relatively normal we are not going mm. Mm, perhaps not as normal, but, well, this is actually, no, this is normal. Um, we do think that, uh, generally speaking, more coming to this conclusion that going for North Peru is extremely good, but we are not going to do this because this is not the standard Roman sphere of influence. So we're a little bit the victim of bad timing and not noticing that Austria actually sided against the Ottomans here, which puts Austria in a war which would have meant that this is an opportunity to take one of these miners here. But instead, we declared on uh, Egypt, uh, seeing this as a really good opportunity to just uh, quickly take Crete, uh, because they are very unlikely to have someone stationed in the Balkan strategic region. And this seemed like, uh, you know, it's not valuable land, but it's land that we can, you know, take at this current point in time. Um, and so we're just going for that and war reparations on Egypt. And it should be a fairly straightforward one. We're just going to take this and then we're going to be like, smell you later kind of wishing considering Austria is involved against the Ottomans here kind of wishing we went after one of these guys here though because this is going to be the only way that we generally get these guys it's the result of two wars but it is very interesting to see, be seeing the Ottomans and Egypt being crushed simultaneously here. We've landed Crete quite safely and now we're just back at home defending until Egypt eventually gives out. We hoping that maybe the Ottomans, it looks like the Ottomans will be able to stay in this war like an extended period of time while we go for, you know, one of Luca or Modena, but this is probably a bit too much, but I, I don't think I've seen Austria side 
like they sided on the religious revolt side in exchange for becoming a protectorate, uh, which is a little bit of an aggressive move we see uh, that we don't normally see. So it looks like they will be picking this up, which means it's quite unlikely, I think, that Romania ends up forming. So we saw that, unfortunately, Prussia has gone to war with Austria, uh, which is going to make it more than easy for us to be able to go for Modena. Austria is extremely unlikely to side against us in this case, and so we will just be rolling them up. We did, of course, rename this the First Legion. Let's get, oop, let's not disband it. We disband nothing. Uh, and let's give it a nice little red Roman color. Uh, Let's give it a nice little red Roman color. We were just kidding when we said we didn't want to make it a red Roman color. We click confirm. And so that will be the first legion, the first of many. And then we have the peacekeepers as kind of our national defending force. I think we're gonna use all uniform legions, uh, which is not optimal, but it's um, it's really not optimal, but it's certainly going to be a little bit themey. Uh, we do get a resource boom. We are using kind of a lot of edicts right now. We don't really have too much consumer goods. And so this is gonna still be good, but we are using a few edicts just like to emphasize that we have an enormous amount of authority normally because we are getting stuff from full uh theocracy oligarchy you know racial segregation state we, there's so many sources of um you know uh authority including uh the vatican city in lazio and we are here about to get the realist good dealsist the realism tech which we will now begin the save scumming process of this run um just like julius caesar did before he crossed the rubicon he clicked uh escape he clicked save game and he created a save file that way just in case the rubicon crossing did not work he would not be screwed and so what we are going to be doing here is we are going to be doing some agitator funny business uh we are going to be taking this roman curio boyo and we will keep exiling him until he rolls a nihilist now that we are now able to roll a nihilist hopefully this is going to be working out we did kind of have an interesting thing where he just kept rolling authoritarian so i think it might it's possible that they patched the ability to do this uh but or he kept rolling traditionalist man is he just gonna roll traditionalist every time we're gonna take some rolls and then if it this doesn't do uh what we what it's been doing in the past uh we will cry we will do a lot of crying because we've researched realism first which is i mean it i don't want to I'm, stuff's getting real is what I'm trying to say. This is probably the worst tech rush we've ever done. Um, this is the second worst tech rush we've ever done. And so if they've changed that exiling agitator mechanic where you can now no longer roll anything, this is going to be really sad for us because we didn't see any theocrats. We just saw 100% on our exiled agitators. We saw 100% um, the, the traditionalist um, guys when we were exiling our guy. And so, uh, even though um, we know that these guys can, in theory, roll something else, so we're going to keep looking at that. Well, would you look at that? We have a nihilist in the Roman Curia. Now, as happy as this is, and it does make us very happy to have the nihilist in the Curia, we have encountered a bit of a problem, or just realized a bit of a problem. We do not have an agitator slot for this gentleman, and... We cannot create an agitator slot because our exile dissident is on cooldown because this is how we got the agitator. So we can't actually invite this nihilist and put him in charge of the Roman Curia, which is big sad. And so uh, we are going to have to try and become a major power as quickly as possible or just cry our way to the bank because we uh, don't have kind of what we want. We will reform the government, we will put the Curia back in with like less legitimacy than before, and then cry a bunch because we do not are not getting our nihilist, man. He doesn't believe in anything, and he believes he doesn't need to agitate for anything because he's a nihilist. Ah, uh, this is just so unfortunate. Well, we could grant command here, but the problem with this, this is also a cooldown. I mean, we could invite him. So what we could do actually here is we could grant leadership to this guy. Uh, we could put the, oh no, we can't put the rural folk in government. If we could put the rural folk in government and then grant leadership, then we could invite the nihilist and the nihilist would start a movement, um, you know, to get rid of, uh, I'm sure he would go after state religion first. Um, but uh, yeah, unfortunately we're not going to be able to do this. Uh, in pain, 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 pain. Um, <sighs> stupid agitator. We hope that this guy settles down. You know what? You know what? If we passed homesteading, he might settle down. This is true. So I guess we're just going to take a crack at homesteading? Maybe? I mean, the civic nobility gets really pissed. They'll leave the government. And we have 13% support. 
suppose we're not passing anything else and if we rev and those guys lose all the power that's maybe not so big a problem this is a huge wrench in our plan we or or, or we could try and get uh, up to being a major power somehow but like, I don't know how we're going to bridge. That's such a huge thing to bridge. We've been building up maybe kind of a little bit more aggressively than normal anyways. And so I guess we're going to go for it. But we'll we'll see how we can navigate this. By the way, the way the saves coming worked for this is we had a save. And we exiled him. And then we got a traditionalist. And then we just reloaded the save. Waited one day. Exiled him. We got a Ludite. And then on the third try, we got the Nihilist. Um, normally, you cannot roll a Nihilist uh, with uh, with the Devout very obviously but this guy is also probably not going to live too much longer so this is going to get a bit ugly in terms of how we are going to possibly become the roman empire and we might even have to go the roman republic first yuck um but this is kind of the only way i can maybe see it is if we go uh you know into a, a presidential or parliamentary republic with the idea of returning to a monarchy a la julius caesar style but other than that it's going to be pretty tough we might be able to dust up these three miners though here we might be able to pick up all of the miners uh while austria is busy you know while mummy is busy fighting daddy here so it's looking like we're going for a bit of a revolution but another thing that's kind of a bit interesting is okay there's no private queue which means the shipyards we actually get to actively choose where we're putting them and so we're going to put them down in lazio not because we have a port bonus because i don't think we do uh there's no port bonus but we are planning on putting encouraging manufacturing in here the whole game along with greener gra grass as a kind of means of making this the greatest city in the world and you know if you think about it, it it's almost like having a state bonus because we are guaranteed this 20% throughput bonus from encouraging manufacturing. So this is going to be one of the better places. We'll put both of them on auto expand and this should handle, for the most part, we're hoping uh, the boat needs for our entire country uh, really leveraging, you know, the extra throughput we're getting here. I think we'll offset uh, some of the mappy penalties that we are going to be having. Although, to be fair, when we want split PMs, this is going to be a little bit uh, not the bee's knees, but it's going to be okay for us uh, at least at the beginning. Uh, these guys are still fighting, so it does look like we can kind of take Luca without any bit of trouble whatsoever here. We do get ourselves a bit of a rev. It should be fairly straightforward, and in fact, I think we could even just cheese the rev by just landing it. Um, if I'm not mistaken, their army is assigned to the front. There is no army defending against the landing, and so we can instantly occupy a, a rev of this size. Um, but we will be trying to pass this through so that hopefully the agitator just retires. He's like, you know what, I've done enough my time here is done i will make way for the nihilists to come into power we can now get a trade agreement with the two sicilies which is going to be fantastic for us uh, because we will get ticking positive relations and we have kind of fully consolidated all of Italy in terms of, uh, you know, we took out all the miners now, uh, and we went for reduced autonomy on Constantine, they backed down, and now we're reducing it on Mascara. Uh, it'll be a little bit interesting that we will have cut off, uh, you know, access entirely into Tuat uh, from uh, from France here. France is going for Atabas, they are going to get it, uh, but we will have access to kind of all of this North Africa. We do have to go after Morocco, we have to go after Tunis, Carthage, of course, must be destroyed um, but you know things are progressing along quite well we can check but I'm, I have a sneaking suspicion uh, that yeah this is unfortunate the nihilist has dead uh, the nihilist has died unfortunately so we are going to need to figure out another path onto um, uh, both going for going first into kind of a presidential thing maybe and then moving backwards um, to uh, being uh, more Oh man, our civ the problem is our landowners that now have zero clout following that rebellion. This actually feels so terrible. How are we going to possibly get these guys back up? Well, so the Roman period pontifical does give, uh, if I recall correctly, they endorse monarchy. So all we have to, all we're going to have to do is we're going to have to swap first to parliamentary part some sort of republic a roman republic if you will and then we're gonna have to swap back to monarchy in order to you know get kind of what we want in power um which is kind of uh, we can't even go for autocracy now we would have this is this is definitely when we planned it out we'd of course planned to be able to get that nihilist because we were rushing uh that tech to get it as fast as possible we rushed realism to get it as fast as possible and we did get the nihilist in time we just didn't have the agitator slot to make use of him uh which is just so so unfortunate 
So I think we're actually going to pull back off of homesteading, which I even thought was maybe kind of an okay one um, in terms of actually simulating ancient Rome. Um, but the the thing is, is we are going to want to go monarchy. And these guys, we can't make use of the civic nobility very, very easily if we go homesteading. It's going to absolutely... If we go homesteading into some sort of republic, it's just going to absolutely smash the clout. I'm just trying to think what the... I mean, to be fair, we, we, we do have an oligarchy. Oh, who supports monarchy? The industrials support monarchy? Hold the phone. Pump the brakes. When did you guys start endorsing monarchy over... Well, this changes everything. So I guess we're going to... I guess truly the savior of Rome is Crassus. All hail. We will, we will be using the industrialist to, to try and pass monarchy. Um... In which case, uh, we don't really mind passing uh, homesteading. We're instead going to go on to monarchy. Now, we kind of don't like this guy very much as the monarch, to be fair. Uh, well, he's erudite, extra popularity. We would prefer to have a different monarch, which is a little bit awkward. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers. We can use the industrialist to pass this. Um, which it, I didn't realize that the industrialist... Yep, yep, okay, they oppose theocracy. Okay, well, you know, they, they crass us for all of this. Also, you know, close to 10 years in the game, we're finally starting to get some useful tech. So we did do get Atmo Engine. We are going to turn it on everywhere, and then we are going to set the coal, because we don't have any coal. We are going to set the coal to be import-oriented, um, and we are going to look to import some coal from some people. We just need to take it in on pause. And, wow, that auto-completes the atmospheric engine. That's crazy. Um, but uh, it's crazy because we don't have any coal. So it's like, how are you turning those on, bro? Um, but we're going to import coal. Namely, we're going to import as much as possible when we can from Sardinia and also from two Sicilies to try and uh, eventually get something going with them. And I think we're going to... This is kind of the square of where we are trying to be most involved uh, regarding trade is Austrians, French, and uh, these two two Italians. Uh, that way we can try and uh, stave off any sort of ingress. Austria, because we fooled around in here. Although, to be fair, Austria, we might not have to worry about Austria too much, but France is definitely going to be, uh, you know, chomping at the bit to try and reacquire some North African stuff. But with the atmospheric engine, we will look for the better way. That better way being, of course, a water tube boiler. And so we will get a little bit of progress on water tube boiler. I think after this, though, we do need to go railways. Maybe we don't need railways. Maybe we just go water tube. Um, Let's actually check the infrastructure. Let's see Paul Allen's infrastructure, uh, which is going to namely be kind of uh, rough in Tuscany and also, yeah, yeah, okay, we need the we need the infrastructure. So we're going to go right for railways here, and then probably after that, water tube, which is kind of what a standard start looks like, you know, when you don't rush realism, the realist, which didn't even end up helping you because... <laughs> You didn't need the realism, you didn't need the nihilists, because we had deep in our heart Crassus all along. I think a trade agreement with France will be quite nice, because we'll be able to maintain positive relations with them over an extended period of time. We're going to look to improve relations with Great Britain, and maybe start to try and do some trade with Great Britain. I think overall it would be definitely best for us to join a customs union, but since all roads lead to Rome, including the trade routes, I don't think that's going to be possible for us to do. We are going to be going for Morocco now. Fortunately, we will able to sway France to ban slavery we are expecting France to side against us a lot and so we're going to need to be on the constant lookout uh, for if we can do anything in regards to that we might even want to become their subject temporarily except for you know Roman pride would not tolerate such a thing uh, but we are going to be getting Morocco here and uh, we are going to be on the lookout for when Tripolitania changes colors this is an indication that the Ottomans have failed the sick man of Europe event and have released all of their subjects at which point we will be able to go for Tunis and Tripolitania. And so, um, despite, you know, it not being necessarily super, super easy for us to... Mm, we are papal first, Catholic second. Where's the Rome option on this? Is this bugged? Can we open a, a, a thing? This appears to be a bug. There's no Roman option, uh, but we're getting ever closer to that with our, you know, monarchy here, um, which is... Uh, we got a pretty good... Ugh, I think we don't want to take a negative two enactment chance, but we really kind of don't want to have a setback because we really, really want to lock in the monarchy. Um, and so this is going to be big for us. We're going to get rid of that so that we can be running positive on this. Um, 
the money's not real, it can't hurt us, except it kind of can, and it does look like it might be. Uh, but once we get war reps off of Morocco as well, uh, we should be sitting in a pretty good spot at a decent amount of infamy, and we will also be getting to the point where hopefully we can subjugate Greece. They're still a minor, they're really stuck in a being a minor now because their prestige is well over, so we have to come up uh, in order to do that, and actually we're just having a struggle. It's probably not going to be until after we annex Constantine that we will be able to subjugate Greece. Um, in which case, maybe we just go just for Attica, uh, which is where the really good state is, and we might even put some shipyards uh, re building up there as well, because they actually do have one of these bonuses um, that we kind of uh, had mentioned earlier. This would also be our first lead uh, in the country, and so this would also be um, useful to us. So a little bit rare, but Attica, or sorry, uh, Greece just backs down, giving up Attica. We haven't seen that in quite a hot minute, but this is going to be nice because it does give us the potential. It does give us the potential to slot in a very good company, which is the Koopas Company, uh, which gives railway building throughput, steel builds throughput, honest prosperity bonus, and it's tied to both motor industries and tools. To be fair, we've had this uh, company slot for a while. It might be a little bit of a leak that we haven't gotten to the point where we can utilize it, but we're coming up on some infrastructure problems. Um, but maybe we can actually push Tuscany up. So we're going to look to push these iron mines up quite a bit to level 10 here in the queue. And then in order to facilitate this, because we have full control of everything, uh, we're probably going to put in exports of iron uh, to various markets. And we're going to focus in on these three, generally speaking, um, more so than being as profit oriented because of our trade strategy. Because we eventually want to pull two Sicilies in and also Sardinia Piedmont into our uh, customs union and so we're going to be deviating from the super logging focus that we were kind of initially on here and be moving more in a direction of uh this iron mines here we do have a few places on auto expand you can see them come up um, but we are trying to mainly have it be uh stuff in lazio because that's where we have our encouraged manufacturing edict and to be fair we are building rome the city of rome quite tall uh, but also um you know we have stuff oriented around uh you know the construction loop uh which is namely tools iron and wood right now uh in both tuscany and umbria and then later on when we get kind of this turmoil down uh we will be doing the same in Emilia as well as in mm, not quite Attica because we don't have access to yeah it is nice though that we got it without a bit of a fight because there isn't any devastation here um, but once it gets incorporated and up going we can definitely make some glass works here uh, but the Koopas is really going to be the one uh, to look after uh, Bas uh, Basilides is also decent because that 5% infrastructure that's pretty nice I don't think it's going to be very easy for us to get the prosperity bonus on this but this is an interesting one and a ton of convoys if we want to do a ton of trade which is kind of uh, a little bit attractive considering how we can manipulate our building ownership from being like entirely one thing if we want because we have no private queue at this current juncture because we're playing without it right now. And we are arriving at a moment, a moment of truth, a moment of the rise of the Roman Empire. Streamer luck. Oh, the public address went awry. This is this is not the streamer luck, but we will get a little bit of an extra enactment chance off of that, which is something. So it looks like France is offering us a defensive pact, and while diplomacy is kind of useless in this game, I think that this is going to be useful. Uh, well, okay, I'll eat my own words in the sense that this will prevent France from joining plays directly against us, I believe, more often, which is going to be very useful because France is going to really want to thumb our pie because we have taken Northern Africa before they could. Um, but, um, you know, France can take Northern Africa or France normally takes Northern Africa, but this isn't France anymore. This is Gaul and this isn't the Papal States anymore. This is, oh, oh, another low roll here. So Egypt was left significantly weakened by their first run in with the Ottomans, and we might have missed a chance to like go after the Ottomans now. I think if we go after, it'll be too late, and they'll we'll be done with this war by the time mobilization can occur. Although Ottomans might be stuck at zero percent, but um, if France wants a way out uh, relatively soon, then it will just get uh, pieced out, and they're not that that far off of it. Um, but we do see. Wait, did the Ottomans start this? Wow. 
what chads look at this they started a war against france for returning palestine uh and, and um looks like they'll be losing cars for their efforts and as well as a basara treaty port um but uh, maybe we could have done something maybe missed a little bit of a spot here uh but egypt as i was saying was quite weak uh but they're not so weak that we can fight them uh you know kind of with our current situation uh, even with like outmaneuvering them and stuff like this um they're they're not stretched in a weird way it'll be difficult to land them even if they're trying to land us and we try and land it on them it'll be too hard uh and so we do have a decent amount of military in the queue uh namely naval bases and uh more barracks and also the naval bases are going to be important for raising our power rank right now we're a minor power and we like want to do stuff like subjugate portugal but we can't subjugate portugal um and a big part of why we want to subjugate them is because then we get access to all this overseas stuff uh which unlocks a whole bunch of strategic regions remember we cannot declare uh an interest in anywhere that was not owned by the roman republic but this doesn't mean we can't have a subject with an interest in these areas and so um we will be looking to kind of expand this way and so going after you know portugal as well as eventually like greece and egypt this is gonna kind of be in the what we're going to be looking for and these are the easy pickings um you know in terms of what's going on tunis and tripolitania will also be easy in terms of getting most of the coast and then it's just hard stuff from there where we are going well actually no more easy stuff with two sicilies and sardinia and one but then it's just hard stuff because then we have to fight france austria and spain which is uh, quite a lot to maybe get done, especially without having, you know, the early game huge bump from going after South Africa, which is hard to overemphasize how powerful that is, but we're, we're taking a different path right now, a more honorable path, if you will. So we see a little bit of a revenge of the nihilists in that we have gotten a nihilist in government here <laughs> in charge of our intelligentsia. So the nihilists do strike back. We're going to put him in gov, but we are facing down a pretty big rev. And so, you know, moment of truth, heavy handedness, heavy handedness indeed. Um, we will just let them step down, but we will just get Rome on this tick because obviously this is the most climactic tick. And now we are Rome and we have a revolution brewing for consumption based taxes, which is a little bit weird uh but as you can see that says rome that says rome on it it's not quite red i was really hoping that we would color swap i know we color swap for the republic do we really maintain white on this truly this is the worst timeline if we maintain white because we are the roman empire but i mean look at this guy's hair and look at the fact that we're not this deep red color bro are we gonna have to go parliament are we gonna have to go republic just to get the red I'm not sure if we want to, I'm not sure if we want to do this, but we are Rome, titled Rome, country in the Roman market, big nice, we have become Rome. So I think we will call that a start here. We did have a little bit of a bumpy road. We talked about Crassus a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit of a history lesson here, but we had a little bit of a bumpy road switching to monarchy to become Rome. Uh, let me know, since I'm probably not going to record the second episode before I release this one, let me know if you think we should either stay Rome, aka autocracy Rome, or think we should go Roman Republic for the red color, because we are not red. Uh, but we also got some expansion down, uh, you know, kind of in North Africa here. And so nice little humble beginnings we got going on. Um, next episode, we will uh, be, well, here's what we have on the tech lineup. Um, we are going to be going into Water 2 Boiler very, very strong, especially because we do have slotted in the metal company now. Uh, and we are looking to export metal pretty aggressively uh, as we can. And also, uh, once we get the railroads up and coming, we will be able to solve some infrastructure issues. Um, we want egalitarianism because a lot of people are agitating because they hate our tax law. Uh, and we would like to swap to the best tax law. Uh, they want to swap us to consumption-based taxation, but a lot of these guys would be happier on prop uh, taxation, and so um, we are hoping to do this uh, and kind of get our rid ourselves of some radicals here, so proportional taxation is going to be kind of something we're interested in, and then finally nationalism to unlock our ability to diplomatically kind of integrate uh, both two Sicilies and Sardinia Piedmont, uh, and so this is going to be kind of what we have coming on up as for a nice uh, foothold, I think, uh, in here. We also got a little bit of some cheeky experience 
expansion, we took Crete off of Egypt. Um, we maybe should have gone for something on the Ottomans. Maybe we even will at the start of next episode. Uh, and we went Attica from Greece. And now that it's incorporated, we will be able to, um, when we build a tooling workshop up high enough, we will be able to put in uh, the Kupas uh, tooling company, which is going to be very, very strong for us. This is probably going to be our second company um, if we can uh, if we can manage it. The steel, the railways building throughput is really, really, really good um, because it increases not just the output of transportation, but also the output of infrastructure. Uh, and so that is going to be uh, really nice. It's one of the better tooling companies. I think it might be the third best, maybe second best, uh, probably third. Um, there's like a Polish one I think that's really good and the best one's probably Belgium. But that's kind of what we've done this episode and what we're focused on and where we're going. Uh, if you like this, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, you know, do the YouTube algorithm thing. And then I have one last thing to say. One last thing to say about the dear old nihilists who have, uh, you know, betrayed us and we were not able to use the nihilist in the way that we wanted. Fucking Nazis. They were Nazis, dude? Oh, come on, Donnie. They were threatening castration. Uh-huh. Are we going to split hairs here? No. no. Am I wrong? Well, he, he man, they I'm were a... nihilists, man. Huh? They kept saying they believed in nothing. Nihilists. Fuck me. I mean, say what you want about the tenets of National Socialism, dude. At least it's an ethos. Yeah.